Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending our event today, Returnships, Start Your Next Career Chapter with Lockheed Martin. If you do have any questions during the speaker or panel portions, please submit them through the chat box. There will be a Q&A session after the panel. I also want to let you all know that this event will be recorded. Thank you all. And now I'd like to hand it over to our Irie Launch keynote speaker, Carol Fishman Cohen. Thanks very much. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm very excited to see you all here. I'm Carol Fishman Cohen, the CEO and co founder of iRelaunch. And as some of you might know, I'm a relauncher myself. I returned to a financial analyst role after 11 years out of the full time workforce. And I've been working in the career reentry space for almost two decades now. And we at iRelaunch have been central to defining the space. And we're very proud to be working with Lockheed Martin and the Chapter Next program. And especially today to be focusing on Chapter Next, this is a program that has some history to it and has some incredible success stories that you're going to hear about here directly from the, the successful relaunchers in this program shortly. And it's also a program that has been innovating over time. So Chapter Next launched in October, 2018, and there have been eight cohorts that have gone through the program to date in locations along the East Coast and in a range of roles. And there's a lot of flexibility that's been built into these roles and the program in terms of how and when work gets done. Uh, there's part-time, there's virtual. You'll hear from the Chapter Next alumni talking about that later. And I'd say those elements of the program are pretty unique. Uh, and uh, so pay attention when, you, when you're hearing uh, the details from the alumni of Chapter Next uh, on our panel in a little bit. Now, Chapter Next started with one cohort a year in the fall, and then in 2021, moved to two cohorts a year in the spring and fall, and now the program is moving to what we call rolling admissions, and you'll hear a little bit about that too shortly. But what I want to point out right now is that Chapter Next is what we call an intent to hire returnship, and so that means that Participants are recruited and brought onto their teams with an expectation that they will be hired instead of the possibility. And you can only imagine the difference in the experience of a chapter next participant and everyone who's involved in supporting that person, their manager, their team, and, and, the, and the recruiters during the recruiting process, when the focus and the philosophy is on intent to hire, as opposed to maybe someone being brought in for on a contract basis to do a project for, for a few months and then uh, maybe moving on to something else. So that's a very important element of the program. Uh, and also the other thing is that when a return to work program has some history the way Chapter Next does, that means that there's starting to be a critical mass of relaunchers inside the organization. And this is significant for a number of reasons. First, uh, those relaunchers who have graduated from the program and have been now making their careers at Lockheed Martin can mentor the new participants that are coming on board. Uh, these same alumni can give feedback about the program as it's evolving and innovating. And ultimately, and what we're, the, the vision is, is that these relaunchers are moving up in the organization as more time get, goes by and will be in a position to hire other relaunchers and ultimately potentially manage a relauncher who is coming on board through the chapter next program. So we're starting, um, we're moving toward that point and, and it's, really, it's, it's really, really exciting. And then the other thing that um, is significant about this particular point in time is that the normalization of career breaks is happening in real time, right before our eyes. And it's such an, an interesting moment that today is when we're having the session, of course, it's International Women's Day, but also just last week, there was an announcement that I almost wanna say was 
a radical development in, in the normalization of career breaks that has really brought us closer to that goal. And that is that LinkedIn came out with this announcement that they are have created this new career break profile category. And that means that just like you uh, put in your LinkedIn profile some past experience at a particular employer, you can now officially say that you've taken a career break. There's a category for career breaks or like 13 different reasons that you can pick um, for why you took your career break. And it gives you an opportunity to give a description and really describe the impact that that career break has had on your perspective, uh, ultimately making relaunchers even better employees. And that's one of the attributes of relaunchers is that we do bring a different perspective and that is in part informed by our career breaks for whatever reason and understanding that you know, people can take career breaks for a health issue. They can take career breaks for caregiving. Maybe it's to explore a passion or extended travel. So there are really excited exciting positive reasons for taking career breaks. And there are also reasons that are more difficult and, and challenging, um, but either way that they, they are impactful. And now there's this opportunity to call out your career break on your LinkedIn profile. And if you think about it, programs like Chapter Next require a career break for eligibility. So the more that you can call out your career break, the better you can be seen as a candidate for Chapter Next. And on the recruiting side, if you can imagine, it's, an, it's especially important for recruiters who can now do keyword searches around the career breaks category and identify people who are on career break, who are potential candidates for the program. And in the past, we've seen situations where relaunchers are passed over or they're rejected because for one reason or another, when we're talking about our volunteer work or maybe occasional consulting that we're doing or recent relevant coursework, it gets misinterpreted as not having a career break and working currently versus now there's this opportunity to make it very, very clear. So um, we're very excited about this at iRelaunch. Um, we, we think that uh, this is game changing in the way that people are, are starting to view the career break. And that is in part because LinkedIn, the arbiter of career break profiling, is really validating the importance of a career path that includes a career break by having this new career break feature. And, and that plus the influx of people who took career breaks during the pandemic are, are really pushing the normalization of career breaks forward. Now, at iRelaunch, we thought this announcement by LinkedIn was so significant that we actually created a campaign around it. You can see it on my background. Uh, we're calling it hashtag call out your break. And it's really encouraging as many relaunchers as possible to use that career breaks feature and encouraging employers to publicly uh, set, call out themselves that having that they want to see the career break. So for example, uh, Chapter Next, Lockheed Martin, they want you to call out your career break so they can clearly see your, your eligibility. So um, that's we're working on that on both the employer side and on the relauncher side. And as you can see, there's been now this complete reframing of the career break because originally you had a career break and it was a reason to toss out your resume. And now having a career break is what you have to have to be eligible to apply for and participate in the program. So think about how significant it is for Lockheed Martin to have a program like Chapter Next because it's powerful signaling to all the constituencies uh, within Lockheed Martin's employee population Maybe it's current employees who have a friend or relative who's on career break and interested in returning. Maybe some of you are here today because a friend, you're a friend or relative of someone who works at Lockheed Martin. Uh, Lockheed Martin's own alumni. So people who used to work at Lockheed Martin who are currently on career break can now come back through the Chapter Next program. Maybe some of you are in the audience right now. Uh, and also it, the, having the program is really signaling to employees who are earlier in their careers, who might be contemplating a future career break, that if they make that decision, 
there is a formal pathway back and that's already been thought through and recognized by Lockheed Martin. So from all the research we've seen, career breaks are not going away. And we expect to see more career breaks. Uh, and especially uh, since the, the pandemic has happened, that's, an, that's another major factor. But even separate from that, um, surveys of millennials show that more of them are anticipating career breaks than, than ever before. So programs like Chapter Next, companies like Lockheed Martin are in an excellent position to engage with people who make this decision to take the career break in the future. So that's all very exciting. And the um, normalization of career breaks is, is, is really exciting that we're in the middle of this. Um, and I also just want to acknowledge Lockheed Martin as leading the way with this excellent program. And I'm very excited that all of you are here to hear more about it and get the details and then hear directly from people who have participated in the program and are now employees at Lockheed Martin and are moving forward in their careers right, right at the company. So a uh, great way to start out today. And, uh, and there are so many elements of this program right now that are gonna give you lots of information about chapter next. So I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda and Amanda, please take it from here. Thank you very much, Carol. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And I want to wish everyone a happy International Women's Day. My name is Amanda Weissman, and I'm a software architect on the Aegis Combat System. I'm based outside Washington, DC. Aegis is used on most of the US Navy's surface fleet and across seven international navies. It provides command and control and weapon integration for ship defense and ballistic missile defense. I've been with Lockheed Martin for 13 years and have had a variety of opportunities in systems radar and manufacturing engineering and in project management. I'm the chair of our Society of Women Engineers Committee and, and a member of our Women's Impact Network. I'm married to another Lockheed Martin engineer. We have two kids, a seven-year-old and a two-year-old. I work part-time for a few years for Lockheed after my oldest was born. I have a BS in electrical engineering and an MS in material science and engineering from Rochester Institute of Technology. And I took advantage of Lockheed Martin's tuition assistance program and received my MS in systems engineering in the evenings from the University of Pennsylvania. Now, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Han Schnell. Please tell us about yourself. Thank you, Amanda. Hello, everyone, and happy International Women's Day. My name again is Han Schnell, and I am a systems engineer, uh, and I'm the lead for an Aegis development program for the Japanese Navy. Uh, in this role, I serve as the liaison uh, between the systems engineers and the software engineers and the program office so that they understand what it is that the customer is looking for, and I distill that into what the needs are for uh, these engineering organizations to produce for the customer. Uh, in terms of my background, I studied electrical engineering um, in college, and I earned a bachelor's degree from Stevens Institute of Technology and a master's degree from Drexel University. I also took advantage of the um, tuition assistance and, and, and got my master's uh, after hours as well. I have spent most of my career in Morristown. Uh, at least badged to Morristown. And I have worked in many different engineering departments within uh, this facility in hardware, software, firmware, and currently in systems engineering. I have had uh, roles as technical lead as well as functional lead. Uh, I've been a first line manager as well as a senior manager and uh, of an engineering department. And like Amanda, I also am married to another Lockheed Martin engineer and we also have two children. My children are a little bit older than Amanda's and uh, they're really adults. Um, I do love that Lockheed Martin has uh, business resource groups uh, that, or BRGs that support the employees and also provide um, a way for allies to get engaged and get involved. Uh, I belong to several BRGs. Uh, one of them is the Women's Impact Network or WIN. Uh, the Professional Asian American Network, or PAN, and also the Military Veterans uh, BRG. 
in addition to the BRGs, uh, I also sing with the company choir and I've sung for our ship commissionings uh, and special events. And I have played intramural uh, volleyball and softball with my husband uh, after hours. From a uh, career development point of view, with the help of my mentors and my sponsors, uh, I've had so many opportunities to grow and to learn. And these experiences have enhanced both my career and my personal life. And so to pay it forward, I too am a mentor uh, of others and I use the tool called WINGS uh, to help advance others in their career. So Amanda, in a nutshell, that is my career so far with Lockheed. Han, thank you for sharing your background. My first question for you is how have you benefited from Lockheed Martin's flex schedule to balance your work and personal life? Well, Amanda, being a working mother, as you know, I often must balance uh, the deadlines I have at work with the needs of my children and my family, uh, especially when my kids were little. Uh, I currently work a 980 schedule where every other Friday I have off and my husband works a 410 schedule where every Friday he has off. Um, when the kids were little, I was able, and even today, I'm able to flex my time working less on one day to um, support a school event or do some outreach activities. Uh, and then I'm able to make up those hours later on on another day. Um, being able to do that helped me when my son was playing baseball in high school to be able to attend his home games and really uh, cheer on the team. Uh, also, when the games were near the Lockheed site, if they were playing Lordstown, I would be able to, to step out and, and go to that uh, as well. Uh, knowing that I had a way to continue to support work and, and to be engaging meaningfully there and still be able to be with my family and engage meaningfully at home as well uh, was very an important factor uh, to keep me centered. Um, I was also able to use uh, something called incremental uh, FL, FMLA, uh, to take care of my mother when she was ill, uh, to be able to take her to doctor's appointment, take her to physical therapy, and not have to worry about making up that time because I, my hours were uh, accounted for and paid. Uh, so I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, so that allowed me to be able to be uh, centered and be myself when I was at work uh, and, and not have to worry. And, and really my managers, my leaders, my teams, they were all very supportive of the, the making sure that my balance with the home and the and work were, were in check. So I truly have benefited from the flexibility of um, the work schedule that Lockheed provides. That's great. Lockheed's Martin Flex Schedule allows employees to flex their, flex their time throughout the week to take care of personal needs and family needs. You mentioned that you're a mentor and you utilize the WINGS mentoring tool. How do mentorships support participants who are coming back to the workforce? Oh, thanks, Amanda. So from the very start of the Chapter Next program, uh, we knew that we had to support participants, um, not just within their leaders, but we also need to make sure that they have peer support and, and support from uh, the workforce outside of their uh, department so that they had uh, a different perspective on the larger Lockheed Martin. Uh, the WIN BRG was a big part of the support for this very first cohort that, that we had back in 2018. WIN provided mentors like me to help the participants reacclimate to the workforce because things have changed uh, since they were last in the workforce. So in my current role as a ment uh, mentor, my mentee took a two year break to take care of a newborn uh, and has just started four weeks ago in the latest cohort um, of the returnship. So glad to be able to support there. Uh, from Wing's standpoint, we both connected through that uh, online platform. Uh, the, the tool actually gives us suggestions on topics to talk about, um, ways that we could uh, improve our online presence within the company, which is great. Uh, especially for returnship uh, cohorts that don't have as much information about Lockheed uh, and about you know, the different programs that we have uh, available to them. Uh, 
it also allows us to let the mentor help the employee understand more about the culture of the uh, of the workforce and, and of the sites particularly. We also have ability for mentors at a different location to virtually mentor uh, employees at a different site. So that also gives you a completely different perspective of Lockheed Martin as a whole, as opposed to just your, uh, your little work area. So that's how Wings is able to support the returnships. Sounds like Wings is a great mentoring opportunity for career development. My next question for you is, what career growth opportunities have you taken both domestically and internationally? And did any of these opportunities allow you to telecommute? Oh, sure. I've had uh, many opportunities to travel both domestically and internationally uh, in my many different roles uh, over the years. Uh, for instance, as an Agile coach, I currently travel all over the uh, U.S. to support the uh, RMS business area to teach classes, to help um, teams either become more efficient or to organize for the first time. Uh, I've also taken temporary assignment uh, in Orlando, Florida, uh, and it was a five month assignment. But in this case, I was able to spend one week in Orlando and one week in Morristown. Uh, and in that, the week that I'm here in Morristown, I'm able to telecommute and still work with the team back in Orlando on the same projects. And that ability to be able to work um, every other week at home really helps me to be able to still be connected with my family and yet still be able to provide the technical expertise that the programs in Orlando needed. Uh, so that allows uh, employees and, and, and programs really to be able to utilize a larger um, pool of skill sets. Um, so that work arrangement also let me learn a completely different uh, product line because I had grown up in the Aegis world, but down in Orlando, it was training. So I got to work on a uh, cockpit trainer. So, you know, fighter pilots, where, you know, I would not had that opportunity if it was only in Morristown. Uh, I also had a chance to travel internationally uh, to support meetings and test testing at, uh, in Canada, as well as South Korea. And then in my current role, um, working on the Japanese program, I've traveled extensively to Japan to support testing and integration uh, and training of the customer. So I really enjoy being able to telecommute uh, while I'm in Japan and still be able to support the team back home. Uh, so it gives you a lot of opportunities and it's up to you to really work with your manager uh, and your leader to be able to identify where there are opportunities for telecommuting. Um, the technology is there now. And with the last two years, we understand that telecommuting is a possibility and it is something that uh, can be productive. Uh, so, you know, depending on your role and your, your responsibilities, there are opportunities to telecommute. It's so great to hear about your career growth opportunities at Lockheed mm -hmm. Martin. Can you tell us more about some opportunities you've taken to pursue stretch assignments or move across the business corporation? Sure. I've had uh, many opportunities uh, to work outside of my department as well as uh, some stretch assignments. Um, I'll give you two examples. Uh, the first one was fairly early in my career. Uh, I was in the signal, signal processing department as a hardware uh, design engineer. Uh, and through my network, I learned that the software department was uh, in need of engineers uh, to develop an upgrade to some diagnostic software. Now, being an engineering background, I've had coding uh, while I was in school. So I think oh, this is an opportunity to learn something, uh, do something new, something different. And I spoke with the software manager uh, as well as my manager. And the two of them mutually agreed that it would be a good opportunity for growth for me and that they would offer me to that other department on a on loan basis. So after that period ended, I enjoyed that work so much and the manager really loved what I did that um, I actually transferred to that other department. Uh, and, uh, and I was able to do that because of these opportunities to move. The second example, uh, was when I was the first line manager in the software engineering department. Um, my manager had a, a special assignment that took 
him away from his role. So uh, I was offered the opportunity to take a stretch assignment for six months and um, run the department basically, act as the senior manager for, for my, my team. And while I was the senior manager, uh, I got a chance to better understand what that role was all about um, and how, what skills were needed to run the department um, and learned about the different aspects of uh, the team outside of my department that I had to support as well. So that experience gave me insights to the responsibilities of that role and led to the direct result of my being able to apply for and actually get uh, a, a system engineering senior manager role um, later on. So the ability to move through the business has truly provided a great many different opportunities for me in my career. Thank you for sharing that. We have several opportunities to move laterally and across the business. So there are always new opportunities for career growth at Lockheed Martin. Thank you, Han, for giving us your insight on your experiences and career growth with Lockheed Martin. Now, I'd like to move into our Chapter Next alumni panel discussion. Let's start off by introducing our wonderful panelists. Samantha, I'll start with you. Hi, Amanda, thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Samantha Orlando and I'm a senior systems engineer here at Lockheed Martin. I was in the spring 2021 cohort. I currently work on the F-16 training systems program here at RMS at Lockheed Martin RMS Orlando. In my previous work life, I was a systems engineer at Lockheed Martin Palm Beach. I was there about 10 years before I got too sick to work and had to resign. It was a long road back, but I was able to return to the workforce through the chapter next program last spring. I'm the current site lead for the ABLE and Allies Business Resource Group, or BRG, at the RMS Orlando facility. Since returning to work last year, I started a corporate-wide initiative called the Affinity Circles to help employees with disabilities or employee caregivers of people with disabilities connect. There's even a circle for employees returning to the workforce, either from short or long-term disability leave or through the Chapter Next program. Sometimes the road back is difficult and it helps to meet with others who have had a similar journey. I was very lucky last fall to be able to mentor Anju, so I'll let her introduce herself next. Anju? Thank you, Samantha. Good afternoon. My name is Anju Verschneider. My husband and I are college sweethearts and we both received job offers from Lockheed Martin and that led us to move to Syracuse, New York and we have been here ever since. Like Amanda and also other participants here, um, my undergraduate study is from RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, my area of study is computer engineering. And during my employment, uh, first time around at Lockheed Martin, they had offered a program called Engineering Leadership Development Program where they pay the way for your master's. So there would with their generosity, I have obtained the master's through Syracuse University in computer engineering program. My story is there were complications within my pregnancy and even afterwards and it for my baby, birth of my baby. And thus it was important to me that I stayed home. Then I was shortly after I was blessed with a second child which extended my full-time stay home season. Um, during that season, it was important that I stay, um, I serve the community. And so I stayed very active in participating in community groups, such as starting a women's group where we bring in speakers and or offer book studies and so on. It was definitely rewarding uh, to help and to encourage one another. But I always wanted to return to engineering work. So even after 20 years of career break, from engineering work, I am so thankful for Chapter Next program, which opened the door for me to join. Um, and I started com coming back at Lockheed with a fall 2021 cohorts. My current role as a systems engineer, I'm doing model analysis work for one of the projects and integration and test work for another project. Um, both are under advanced Hawkeye radar, the airborne radar section of the program. And it's a classified work, so it brings another uh, dimension to where uh, to the work that I have been involved in before. And it has been an exciting journey. 
Outside of work, I serve as a board of directors for a local high school where my children had attended. And I am also helping my daughter plan her wedding who recently got engaged. So there's a lot going on. Very thankful to be back at Lackey. And I will turn to you, Marnie. Hello, everybody. I'm Marnie Kasprowitz. I'm representing the non-engineering side of Chapter Next today. Um, back a few decades ago, I actually went to the University of Alabama to study Spanish and international relations. And I followed that up with a master's degree at the University of Pittsburgh in international affairs. I moved to Virginia to join the CIA, which was my dream job. And I worked there for seven fascinating years. When we were expecting our first child, my husband and I decided to become a one career family. So actually a few days after September 11th, I resigned from the agency and devoted myself to family. We were blessed to have another son after that. So I was very busy with, with two active boys. And I knew that I wanted to return to the workforce when they were both in college. Shockingly, that was going to be happening last fall when our younger son was applying to college. Um, he was actually had an entirely virtual senior year. So we spent a lot of time together, which was one nice benefit of the pandemic if there can be one. And while he was in school, I was trying to figure out how would be the best way to re-enter the workforce because of course, before coming to webinars, just like this one that you are today, I thought 20 years, <laughs> who's taken 20 years out of the workforce? And obviously many of you sitting at home or you know somewhere else are probably thinking the same thing. And just one year ago, I was exactly where you were, dialing into webinars, trying to figure out what's the best way in, what do you do to represent yourself as being you know, relevant and able to contribute. And I was so excited when I found the Chapter Next program. I was actually a member of the fall 2021 cohort as well. I was in that program for 12 weeks and I'm based out of Manassas, Virginia, but I am working fully remote. So um, I've actually been into the Lockheed facility only three times, including one last week. So it's, it's all very new that way. My role is actually as an integrated program planner, which is a new profession for me, one I didn't know about um, prior to the chapter next program last year. And I support programs in the undersea warfare side. So every day I am learning a variety of new acronyms because as all of you who work for Lockheed Martin know, there are so many acronyms that I have Acromania up usually at any meeting. And what's really fun is that sometimes someone will throw out an acronym and I will type in the couple of letters and it'll come up with about 20 different options and you try to use context and sometimes it doesn't really even matter because they're they're just so very many acronyms so every day is a new journey and um, i'm also a member of the women's impact network and i was very excited recently they launched a virtual chapter of the women's impact network for people like me who aren't on site it's really exciting that there will be more opportunities to connect with people and to feel part of a a larger community at Lockheed Martin. And now I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Thank you so much, Marnie. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jennifer Tuffalero, and I am currently working as a control account manager for the Radar Systems Engineering Group. Uh, technically, I'm based out of Morristown, New Jersey, but I am also 100% remote and loving it. Um, this, I joined uh, Lockheed straight out of college. And all right, I'm gonna give a shout out to Villanova because everybody else, <laughs> so I got my bachelor's of electrical engineering from Villanova and then started at Lockheed Martin. And thanks to their reimbursement pro program, I was able to get a master's degree in communications. Stayed at Lockheed for a little while, then jumped ship, went over to Vanguard for a little bit. But then when we started having our family, we also decided that I would stay home. So 20 years and three boys later, um, you know, COVID hit and I thought to myself, you know, I really would like to get back to engineering. When I Googled how to get a job after 20 years, uh, uh, the Ivy launch site came up and I found the chapter next program. I couldn't believe that there were jobs out there for people that had taken such a long break. 
and I was part of the fall 2020 cohort. And ever since then, I've been so grateful for this amazing opportunity to find a job again in the field that I enjoyed, something that's very fulfilling and that fits perfectly with my family. So again, very, very blessed and grateful for this. All right, but thanks and back to you, Amanda. Thank you all for sharing more about your backgrounds. I'm excited to jump into with some questions for our panelists. Anju, you previously worked for Lockheed Martin prior to leaving the workforce. How was your returnship experience and what was it like returning back to Lockheed Martin years later? Yes, Amanda, I'm actually working in the same building where I used to work, uh, but a lot has changed the physical building as well as culture, process, terminology being used, new acronyms <laughs> to be added. Um, and I also switched the career from being a hardware designer to the systems designer work. So it's a tremendous change for me. That is why I am so grateful for Chapter Next program, which really has been a wonderful stepping stone of preparing me with this tra big transition. In addition, before, I, before when I first came to Lockheed, I was a freshman out of college. I was fresh out of college, excuse me, and single. And now I have more variety of life experiences and skills gleaned from just serving the community and a lot of volunteer work and coordinating work I've done before. So there is a different mindset coming back. And um, in, in the past, it was very uh, specialized digital hardware programming, a lot of programming, working mainly with the hardware team. I just love my current experience where I get to inter interface with the hardware engineers, systems engineers, firmware engineers, integration team. It's just collaboration of teamwork and expertise. Uh, my current job is, um, how, well, we also, in addition, we recently had um, demonstrations. It was in-person demonstrations and for a new design concept that is being built on. And even though I've been only here for five months, uh, it has been such a wide experience of going through the demo, going through the integration effort with the team and starting yet another project where I get to see all different aspects of systems work from starting from building the requirements and leading to the test at the end. So it has been a wonderful opportunity and experience. I am very thankful to be back at Lockheed. It has been very engaging and also sweet reunion, especially with the mask off recently. I'm seeing all these familiar faces again. So it's been very wonderful. Thank you. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Anju. It's so great that you rejoined Lockheed Martin when you stepped back into the workforce. Marnie, you didn't work for Lockheed Martin previously. Compared to those who returned to Lockheed Martin, how was your returnship experience being completely new to the organization? Well, one of the things I joke about today is that my life right now is nothing at all like it was a year ago. Um, because I was going to be working remotely, my return to the workforce after 20 years began with um, boxes of IT equipment delivered to my front door. So I figured out where I would set up and you know, dialed up on my first day to talk to you know a boss that I, I hadn't met and tried to figure out what on earth it was that I was going to be doing, which you know is exciting but also a little intimidating. Um, one of the things that I share with my colleagues is the beauty of being my age is that you don't have to know everything. And they're so supportive, the whole community, everyone that I've, I have talked to since I have become a Lockheed Martin employee has been so encouraging. And I ask a lot of questions. Everyone is very patient with me answering all my questions. I take a lot of notes. Um, I still have Acromania up all of the time. But I will have to say that the people have been such an amazing part of this of this journey back into the workforce. And Chapter Next has this terrific umbrella approach to it all, where we have we're paired with a mentor from the beginning. So we have at my program it was twelve weeks, so we had three meetings with a mentor. We also, in my case, um, I had a new hire buddy. So when there were sort of your basic administrative questions that you didn't 
you know, no, and, and you weren't really didn't want to bother someone, um, you could say, well, you know, what do I do? And as for instance, she met me on the day that I went to to the badging office, because obviously I had no idea where that was. Um, there are also a lot of orientations at the beginning, which helps someone like me who didn't have any background with the corporation. I always was excited in the first couple of weeks when there was an all hand so I could dial in and try to start to make sense of it all. And then Chapter Next also had quite a few panels, um, past participant panel. So that was wonderful to hear. And also um, overviews from the different lines of business. So there was a lot of emphasis on bringing me up to speed and giving me the, the perspective for someone who was entirely new to Lockheed Martin. So I was really pleased with all of that. Thanks for sharing your story with us, Marnie. Samantha. Returning to the workforce after a career break can be difficult and at times intimidating. What would you say was the most challenging part of, of your returnship and how did you overcome it? Hi, Amanda, thanks. Because of my medical conditions, the most challenging part of returning to work for me was ensuring that I didn't start something that I couldn't finish. I didn't wanna become invaluable and then not deliver because I got sick. Maintaining my health is priority number one and managing expectations with my manager and my team is a daily exercise. Everyone usually wants things done right now. And for me, that's not always possible. I always ask, when do you need this? Some things can need to be done right away. And I do those right away, but usually I can get a day or two, sometimes even a week to address things that come up. I still get everything done, but I'm not killing myself trying to do it. If I need help, I ask for it, and I haven't been denied help yet. I also work 100% virtually and part-time, so that gives me the flexibilities for doctor's appointments and things of that nature, so I can get everything done and still make it all work. That's great that you were able to overcome those challenges, Samantha. Jennifer. While con conversions are not guaranteed at the end of the program, the end goal for Lockheed Martin is to prepare participants for either full-time or part-time opportunities within the company after their returnship concludes. What was the conversion process like for you? And how was the transition from being a returner to a part-time employee? What changed and what didn't? Thanks, Amanda. The conversion process for me was extremely seamless and simple. Throughout the whole Chapter Next program, the participants are exposed to many different business lines and different opportunities that are available. You have workshops, you have panels that you go to, but all that time you also are doing your job that you were hired to do. So for me, I had constant feedback and communication with my manager. So I was pretty sure that by the end of the program, I was going to be getting an offer. And with her and my recruiter, it was very easy to discuss the offer. They originally wanted me part full time, but truly part time works best with my family. And it was nice because it was easy to have discussions with them to figure out how we could make this work. And we were able to. So truly nothing. I think most of the people on my team didn't even realize I went from being an intern <laughs> to a, you know, part-time employee, because as far as the programs go, I was still doing my job, but it was, it was very, very easy to convert. And I was again, very happy that it wasn't a you know, struggle to, to find the position. Thanks for sharing, Jennifer. That's great that you were able to convert to a part-time role at the end of the program. My next question is directed toward all the panelists. The recruitment process can be different for everyone, depending on the function and or discipline you belong to. Can each of you take two minutes to describe how you found out about the program and what the recruitment process was like for you? Anju, we'll start with you. Sure, Amanda. I have checked Lockheed Martin um, job posts from time to time over the years and even attended Lockheed Martin job fair and submitted my, my resume in the past, but it really did not go anywhere. So because of 20 year gap. And so I understand if any of you are having challenging time too, that returning to workforce with a gap can be challenging. But when I discovered chapter next program posted at the Lockheed Martin site, I applied it right away. And at that time, I did not realize until follow-up meeting, we did not have it in Syracuse yet. 
But once it became available, that opened the door um, for, and I was reached out by Jamie uh, with the good news that Syracuse is starting this program. So it has been wonderful uh, to have a program that supports career gaps and not only supports a career, it's designated for those with the career gaps, but also provide a technical, uh, professional and support group uh, to help you succeed. So it has been great opportunity for me that I am super, I'm definitely grateful for. As uh, far as the tips for those who are in similar situation as I was in, I found, I mean, definitely um, Google is your friend, but also I have utilized um, the college that I've graduated from. I reached out to career office from there and have found their service of just overlooking my resume or even they, uh, I didn't employ this, but I know they offer mock interviews and review cover letters for you. And it was just wonderful to have that resource at fingertips. Um, I definitely had a lot of questions uh, on extensive documentation that um, is required for classified work. And boy, was uh, the staff at HR, uh, Jamie, was super helpful in just an ask, answering the questions that I have. And so there's just so much resources that are available for those, those of us who are going through this transitional career path. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks for sharing, Anju. I believe we want to go to the other panelists for some of these for this also. Uh, Samantha. Thanks, Amanda. I found out about the Chapter Next program from a friend of mine who was still at Lockheed Martin. Um, they knew I was doing much better health-wise and contemplating going back to the workforce, but wasn't exactly sure how to do that. Um, for me, because Chapter Next was, because of the pandemic, it was 100% virtual and part-time. It was the best chance I was going to get to see if I could still go back to work, if I would get too tired, if I could handle the stress and the hours and everything else. So. The best part about the program is that the people who are hiring you know you've been out of the workforce. That's the whole point of the program. So to explain the gaps in your resume, it's far less intimidating and stressful. Um, as long as you're honest and open about what you can do and what you expect to be able to do, there's nothing to worry about for the interview from my perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Let's go ahead over to Jennifer. Like I said earlier, the way I found the Chapter Next program was Google and found the iRelaunch Relaunch website, which led me to the Chapter Next program. One of the things that I found when doing the interviews for the site interviewed for with a few different managers at Lockheed was that some of the questions that they would ask I found a little bit challenging for someone who has been out of the workforce. For instance, they would ask me to cite a specific work example of that of a situation. Well, I was honest with the managers and said, it's been 20 years, I don't remember specific examples. And they would kind of laugh and say, you know what? I wouldn't remember examples from 20 years either. So the nice thing was that I was able to pull from my life experiences. For instance, I was a homeschool president. So I was able to use some of the instances outside of the official workforce to help answer those questions, to use the soft skills that, you know, you've had all these years and life experiences, communication skills, conflict management skills, uh, budgeting, working with different people, all of those things are still relevant and something that you still need to have. The technical skills, if you've been out for a long time, yeah, you're going to need to brush up on them, but that's the beauty of chapter next is that they understand that you're going to come in and still be learning and they don't expect you to hit the ground running from day one, which is something that, again, I was grateful for because it had been a very long time and I'm also in a job that I knew nothing about and was totally different from the engineering I had done before, but because everybody is so supportive and is wonderful about answering questions and explaining things. I, you know, have been successful in the position. 
Thank you, Jennifer. Marnie, we'd love to hear about your recruitment experience into our returnship program. So a year ago, I had never heard of a returnship. Um, I started, like you guys are, wherever you are, on a computer screen trying to figure out how I would return to the workforce. And when I heard about a returnship, I thought, well, this is it. And so I wrapped up that webinar and I, you know, Googled returnships near me. And I couldn't believe that Lockheed Martin had one. And I started reading about Chapter Next, was just so excited at the opportunity. I mean, the, as you all know, the description reads like it's it's meant for us because you had to have a gap and there were no expectations that you had worked, you know, the day before. So um, when I was lucky enough to have a phone screen, which was slightly intimidating just because I hadn't done that for so long and then set up an interview. Um, it was my first interview in 27 years. So I started Googling, you know, what are the most common interview questions? And like Jennifer, it's like, well, I don't have a star answer from 20 years ago because it was 20 years ago. And my experience 20 years ago was very, very different um, skill set. So I powered through because, you know, my sons are at, you know, one's in, at that time, one was in college and one was applying. And so it was a good sort of like around the dinner table. This is what we talk about, you know, questions that would be asked and, and how you how you answer. And um, I found that the, the application process was very straightforward. And I actually was offered the returnship two days before we left to take my son across the country for college. And because of the way it works with Lockheed Martin and the drug screen, that is one of the very first things you have to do. And it has to be done within three days. I had to reach out to Jamie and say, I'm driving across the country and the little tiny town where my son's going to college doesn't have any of the facilities. And so Jamie was awesome and just, you know, was able to push it out, you know, for a week after I got home. So there's so much flexibility I learned from the very beginning because, you know, they're excited that that you're excited and and it just all all builds on that. So I found the application process to be um, much less intimidating than the actual preparing for the interview. Thank you, Marnie. I'm sure your insight will be very helpful to our audience if they go through the chapter next recruitment process as well. My last question is also directed toward all the panelists. The chapter next program runs for about 12 to 16 weeks to allow participants time to acclimate back into the workforce at their own pace. That being said, what advice would you give someone who's considering rejoining the workforce through a returnship opportunity? Anju, we'll start with you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, I'm still learning, a lot to learn, but I would say to all those who are considering this program, put your inner voices of doubt or question aside and jump on this opportunity. I had a lot of questions. I wonder after 20 years, would I be able to succeed? I have so, it's been a long gap of technical skills. And I also wonder because is this the best timing? Because I did, prior to even knowing that there's an offer, we had already started committing to kitchen remodeling, which takes your whole household apart. And I had also volunteered in teaching every weekend. Um, and so all these things I've wondered, but chapter next program, as it was mentioned by my colleagues, offer part-time schedule, which gives you such a flexibility and it's such a helpful way to manage your work responsibilities as well as outside of work responsibilities. And as concerns about my technical skills and shortcomings, um, as it was also repeated, I, I'll just echo again, the program is so well-structured, not only help you to refresh the current tools that company uses, but it engages you in meetings where you learn about other, other sites and other um, learn from other colleagues if we have gone through this before. Mentor program is wonderful. And there's so much resources to help you succeed. And like um, was mentioned by Jennifer, that I also found my team to be so patient and so gracious in answering questions. They they uh, so welcoming. And actually, because um, I felt so comfortable in asking questions. It encouraged other my teammates to want to ask more questions because they know that I need to learn. <laughs> I have so much to learn. And it really created everyone need to learn from each other atmosphere. Um, it is, um, I just encourage to not to 
underestimate experiences we gain from those gap in our uh, life career path because whether it is soft skills or hard technical skills, it those things that we have gleaned can really be utilized uh, for our career path. And that's something we can bring in. So my advice to you, uh, those who are joining us, is if you have any, if you have any question or doubt in your heart, don't let that keep you from, well, first of all, you're not alone. And secondly, don't let that keep you from uh, trying out this great opportunity. Don't let that pass by. On my personal note, Chapter Next program has opened the door for me that I did not think that that would be a possible for me. And I am so grateful for all those who made this program possible. And I encourage all those who are listening to jump on it and give it a try. And I wish you the best. Thank you. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks for that great piece of advice on Zoom. Marnie, what additional advice would you give someone who's considering a returnship opportunity? I think the returnship is the perfect re-entry vehicle. I just, I can't sing its phrases enough. It's so refreshing to just be yourself, right? You just, you go to the interview, you go to work and, and you don't have to pretend that you worked professionally, you know, yesterday or, or even last year. Um, I think that it's very open program as far as just welcoming everybody in, making you feel comfortable. I you know, would encourage you to just go for it. And my advice to anyone who's sitting on the other side of the screen, as many of us, I know I was a year ago, is to be patient with yourself and to just apply because you have nothing to lose. Thank you, Marnie. That was very insightful. Samantha, what advice would you give? So once again, I am slightly different from the rest of my panelists today. Um, my advice is to establish boundaries and don't sell yourself short. Most of us were awesome when we worked. We were fantastic and we wanted to get there again, but being worried about, oh, well, I don't wanna you know, seem, no, tell them everything that you did that was awesome. If you do the program and you work roughly 30 hours a week during the cohort and time comes to convert you over to being a real employee, um, and you don't want to go to 40 hours a week, then ask for part-time. You'd be amazed how flexible they are. As long as you're open and honest, Lockheed will work with you. Um, they want to convert chapter next participants. They want the value you bring to the job. So don't be afraid to ask for what you need. Communication is key in any relationship, and that definitely includes working relationships. Thanks, Samantha. That is extremely helpful. Last but not least, Jennifer, what is your biggest piece of advice that you'd like someone to know if they're considering a returnship program? I think my, my advice is very much echoed with, with everybody else, but it's if the pandemic has taught us anything is that you just don't know what tomorrow brings. And I feel like take the risk, take the chance. It, the program itself is only, you said 12 to 16 weeks give it a shot. You really don't have anything to lose. I know for me, I thought, well, I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I can do this, but I'll try, I'll give it a shot. And, you know, I didn't know whether after so many years, you know, what was going to be working too much, was it going to work, fit in with my life? Because at this point in my life, it's got to, it has to work with my life outside of work. And I have to say that the work-life balance is unbelievable. I, I really did not expect Lockheed to be so flexible with work-life balance. And I, you know, I keep saying to, you know, anybody and everybody that would listen, I said, they have this program. I said, I, you know, I, I can't believe that it's real, that I can have a job that's fulfilling but also have the flexibility to do all the things in life. Again, the, you know, the fun stuff in life that you don't want to miss out on either. It's, it's wonderful to work and it's wonderful to have a filling job, but you also, you know, want to enjoy life while you can too. So it's, my advice would be just give it a shot because you really, you know, all you have is a couple months later, you've earned, if it's not for you, if you decide this isn't what life is supposed to be, then, well, you've earned some money and you've learned something and, you could move on, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you get there at how wonderful it can be. 
Thank you, Jennifer. At this point, I'd like to open it up for questions. Please submit your questions into the chat box and we will answer them. If you have any specific questions about opportunities, please reach out to the resource box that you see in the comment in the chat. Well, for our first question, any recommendations on how to prepare for applying to the program? Also, what is the interview process like? And I can direct that one to Anju. Yes, uh, good question. My interview process was virtual interview because of pandemic and uh, had two technical um, systems engineer and management who had questions, as it was mentioned by my colleague, it was experience, more of experience. Uh, what would you do in this circumstance or that circumstance? So I've also did a lot of Google search of what are some questions to expect and try to think of it from my life experience um, because having a 20 year gap. So I had a couple of questions, um, answers of what situations that I would wanna share uh, where it demonstrates that I have even either overcome or learned from because it's really about learning and growing. Thank you, Anju. Uh, we've had a few questions about engineering or non-technical returnships. So I want to give it over to uh, Jennifer for just a moment to talk about her non-technical returnship. My uh, returnship actually sorry. is a technical one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think you're looking for me. Yes. Yeah, I think it's Marnie. <laughs> sorry about that. Yes, thank you, Marnie. Uh, sure, yeah. sure. So, um, the returnship that I applied for was actually as an integrated program planner. So that was that was the goal was to, you know, be looking for an employee to fulfill that role permanently after after the returnship. So um, the way that that I began because I was working remote was um, I had a few, you know, thanks to Chapter Next, there was some technical refresher training after 20 years. I was grateful for that and, you know, learning to have all, you know, meetings most of the meetings are skype for business so you're not actually seeing someone you're, it's just a you know a phone call and a lot of screen sharing so i was very grateful to my team um i think in my first week they would invite me to meetings and so i would listen in and then we would have time afterwards where i could ask questions and then we sort of progressed you know along that line where then okay well then the next time you know this task would be mine and then the next meeting i would lead and so it was just a a process a gradual process and i was exposed to a lot of different programs from my my different colleagues and at the same time took the um took advantage of the professional development and career development opportunities that chapter next organizes for you which is just a wonderful way to do it. So there's definitely a process to it. There was, you know, as Jennifer mentioned, you're sort of on two different paths. You're on the path of the chapter next program, which is very structured and you have your overviews and you have your panels and you have your, your mentor. And then simultaneously, you're learning how to do the actual job that Lockheed Martin would like you to do if they offer you a permanent position. So it was, it was interesting and it kept me very busy. I actually did um, the returnship full time. I, I wasn't sure I was offered both full-time or part-time. And I thought since I was interested in returning to the workforce full-time, I thought it would be good to at least try out working full-time. My schedule is actually a 410. Everyone on my team does 410, which for me, I enjoyed because after 20 years of taking care of everything, I thought, well, when am I gonna get all of this stuff done that's just part of life? Um, and I enjoy, it was a, change, but I enjoy having every Friday off. They're not really off. They're just off to different tasks, as many of you will know. But it's it's nice. And also, um, on a personal note, my husband, who did not take a 20-year gap, um, has a lot more vacation than I do. And so having the Fridays off is nice for me as a new employee, not having the same amount of vacation that he does, to be able to take some long weekends, which seems like you know, a, a vacation, even though it's just my regular off day. Thanks, Marnie. I want, if you could elaborate a little bit more, did you feel that your lack of engineering background made it challenging for LM to find a fit for you? 
I, I didn't. Um, I'm married to an engineer. Both of my sons are actually studying engineering. So I feel like in a different life, I must have been an engineer. So it's interesting to me. Um, I, you know, I know a, a little bit about uh, submarines before I joined Lockheed Martin. I find it fascinating every day to learn a little bit more. And, you know, besides my program planning team, all of the engineers that I have interacted with are so willing to share their knowledge and answer my questions. And for one of my initial meetings, the engineering program manager sort of said, let's take a step back and let me tell you what we're doing. You know, this is what, this is who we're working for. This is how long the program is. This is what we're trying to accomplish. And I like that, I'm a big picture person. Um, I enjoy working in the details, but I like to have the full scope and to be able to understand sort of where, where I'm fitting in and what everybody is trying to accomplish. So obviously with integrated program planning, you get to see all the aspects of the business. And engineering is a huge part of it, but it isn't the only part. I you know, have a lot of contact with the financial analysts and subcontracts. And so I think that, um, the returnship possibilities for people who aren't engineers are just as promising as those who are engineers. Thank you so much, Marnie, for, for your insight there. Carol, can you share what you think is most useful to share on your resume in order to highlight the career break? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th that's a great question because of with return to work programs, the career break is defined fairly loosely. So for example, yes, you want to put on substantive volunteer work. Yes, you want to put in recent or relevant coursework, although you can actually highlight that um, in a separate section above if you want. But if you are doing substitute teaching, or if you have occasional consulting, or you have a side job at Instacart to bring in a side in income, but has nothing to do with your primary career goals, then those activities would certainly be appropriate to include under the career break heading as part of a number of different activities you are doing while you're on career break. So the, the guidance is usually interpret career break as loosely as possible, put all of that experience, even if some of it was income producing under the career break category, and let Lockheed Martin make the decision about whether you fall within their eligibility guidelines or not. Thank you, Carol. The 12 to 16 week returnship programs. We heard some of the panelists talk about the number of hours. Samantha, is the returnship program 40 hours or 30 hours? Nobody's gonna like my answer because my answer is it depends. And it depends on the role, on your manager, and what the job entails. So as coming back under chapter next, you're categorized as an intern, which means you're not, there's no set number of hours you have to work. Personally, when I went back, I said, you get 20 hours a week because I was just starting back. There were weeks where I did more than 20. There were, you know, there were weeks where I did over 30. It depended on how I was doing and how everything was going. Um, so for me, it was very flexible. I do know that some people, it's when you get into the interview, ask the questions. I look, I can only work 25 hours a week, or I really want to work 40 hours a week. It's up to you. It is flexible. There's no set number. It, like I said, it depends on, on who and what and where. Thank you, Samantha. Next question is, would you please provide more detail on what the returnship structure involves? How much training versus how much time working? And is everyone assigned a mentor? Uh, Jennifer, if you could take this one, please. Sure, no problem. There are a number of different trainings that you take. You can, you, they have assigned trainings that teach you um, the just the basic skills with Outlook and Excel. Um, there's also some training time available that you can use for your specific job. Um, for me personally, I took some training on radar systems because that was something that was brand new to me. There are also, like they've said, different workshops. There's a resume writing workshop. There's some workshops to expose you to the different parts of Lockheed. And then there's your job that you were assigned to. I would say, if I had to put a number on it, I would say maybe 20% of the week 
is 20 to 30 would be training and panels and the rest would be your job. Um, what was the second part of the, oh, is it, uh, do you get a mentor? Just try, sorry, try, but yes, you do. Everybody gets a mentor, which is wonderful. And something at least where I am, I had a mentor through chapter next, but then I also got a buddy and my buddy was somebody that actually worked on my team. So it was nice because I feel like my mentor was the person that I could go to for uh, the more generic Lockheed questions and more career type questions. My buddy was wonderful and I still uh, lean on my buddy when it comes to work questions. What does this mean? Who do I go to for this? What's the process for my act, the actual job that I was performing? Thank you, Jennifer, on that information about the program structure and on the mentorship and buddies. Han, is the program only for women or are men also part of the program? Oh, thanks, Amanda. Uh, it is definitely open to both genders. Uh, it is um, for men and for women, anyone who has had a career break. So that the key is that they've had a career break. In fact, my current mentee uh, is a man who chose to stay home and take care of his newborn while his wife worked. Great, thank you so much, Han. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or we are also looking in the Q&A section. I, have the, I know many of the panelists said that they were virtual. It, would you like to comment on the locations that currently have returnship programs? I know for myself, I am virtual. I live in Pennsylvania, but my office is out of Morristown, New Jersey. Um, but I know we do have virtual returnships because my my buddy, who is uh, now a, I guess, spring of 2022 chapter next cohort, he's located out of Colorado. And so again, it kind of answers the, it's both for men and women and it can be virtual as well. Great, thank you so much, Jennifer. I've, if we aren't able to get to every question today, please send them in an email in the chat box and we will include that email address in the chat. And we'll get back to you at, as soon as possible. All right, uh, let's see. Do have a couple questions in the chat here, uh, and maybe Han, if you want to, to, these look like quick ones. Is the returnship program eligible to U.S. citizens, or can anyone apply? And would it be okay to apply to returnships that are out of state? Okay. Oh, two questions. Uh, so the so it depends on the, the first question. Do you need to be a U.S. citizen? So it depends if your program. Uh, requires that you be able to obtain a security clearance because the programs are uh, classified, then uh, you know, part of that ability to get a security clearance is to have a citizenship. Um, however, we do have commercial programs that do not require that the citizenship piece. Um, and therefore, uh, they may be opportunities for someone who is a non-citizen, um, but is a, a resident uh, who has, you know, a work visa and can and can actually work in the United States. The what was the second question? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Uh, would it be okay to apply to returnships that are out of state? Oh yes, of course. Uh, as as you've heard, um, some of the returnships are virtual. Therefore, it does not matter what state you physically reside, uh, but you can work for a program that is elsewhere. Uh, in my example that I had given earlier, I had supported a program in Orlando, Florida, but while still uh, you know, working from, from Morristown. So it is possible and there are many opportunities to do virtual support. So that is uh, definitely should not hold you back if, if you know that is something that you're interested in. Thank you, Han. Anju. Could you give some recommendations on how do I get a mentor in the chapter next through or a buddy through the program? 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, those two are such an essential part of the program and was so resourceful. The Chapter Next uh, program offers those who are willing to be mentors um, to, and they are uh, made known. And so it's, it's assigned through the program as to who will be the best match. And I was so fortunate to have Samantha, but I've also had opportunity to hear a panel of those who have graduated before and they were all very helpful in sharing their experiences. So definitely through the program, you will be assigned um, mentor. Far as body goes, uh, I was that was another blessing for me. Um, the body I was assigned to was someone who has taken a leave uh, from her career as well. So she also had career break, but it was prior to chapter next being available. She had, I think, taken about 10 year career break. And that's why she was assigned to me as my buddy and was very helpful in specific questions that is uh, targeted for project that I'm part of or the location. And that uh, assignment was made through um, my management. So I would definitely, once uh, you have this offer, to um, look for uh, chapter next uh, mentors uh, program that is being available to you. I would take advantage of it. And as soon as um, I knew that I had a mentor, I put uh, appointment immediately my calendar because I knew how valuable it would be to get insight from those who have had successful um, experience through the program. And I would reach out to manager for the uh, mentors that you could possibly have. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you so much, Anju. Samantha, how do salaries compare while being in the returnship versus once you are hired after? I can only speak from personal experience. Um, but again, my, my answer is going to be, it depends, depends on what role you are being hired into at what level, et cetera, et cetera. Me personally, I, well, sorry, as a chapter next intern or return, um, you're paid as an intern, you're paid what the interns get. So you're very cheap labor, which is fantastic for you because they'll, they're more than willing to do more training and stuff. Oh, it's an intern. They're like free. And so you get thrown all of the, I got more training as an intern than like I ever have ever. Cause I would say, Hey, if we do this now, then you're not paying me as a systems engineer, you know, as a level three systems engineer, you know, to do the same training. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go do that. So I took total advantage of that. I'm like, but I'm cheap. So if you let me do this, you get away with it. When they converted me to a real employee, because I was still part-time, my salary pretty close to doubled, I want to say, because again, you're applying for a position, a role, you're not an intern. Um, similar things happen when you're straight out of school. The intern rate is less than the new employee rate. So like I said, it depends on what level you come in at. Everybody in Chapter Next is paid as an intern. And then depending where you fall on the scale will depend what they hire in at, but it is more when you do get hired on. I hope that answered the question and wasn't too confusing. I think that was very helpful, Samantha. Thank you. You're welcome. Carol, one of our attendees says, I'm a little nervous and anxious for the interview process. How do you recommend I overcome the fear when the interviewer is asking scenario-based questions? Mm -hmm. So the the best way to overcome fear is practice. So if you can practice with someone you know who is working and does hiring, or even, I don't know if someone, what kind of alumni career services might be offered by uh, what whatever your alma mater is, um, or even a friendly and supportive friend or family to uh, practice over and over answering different types of questions, script out for yourself, uh, a short uh, background statement about yourself and script out anecdotes from each of your prior significant work and volunteer experiences, like actually script them out like they're a theater performance and memorize them over and over again, practice, practice. You can just talk to a mirror, talk to a wall, record yourself on your phone, any of those. Um, and then in terms of scenarios where I don't know if that might be a case interview or it might be a behavioral interview. If there's scenarios where you're, they're asking about your own prior experience, then do what I'm, I'm talking about. 
if they're asking you about a scenario like that's almost like a case interview, you can actually go online and look at advice for preparation for behavioral interviews, advice for preparation for case interviews. But at the end of the day, it's all about the practice and repetition um, and scripting out. That is great. Thank you so much, Carol, for that advice. Again, if we didn't get to your questions today or if you have additional questions, please send them to the email that's in the chat box and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all for sharing your experiences with returning to the workforce today and advice to go with it. I know that your insight will be extremely helpful to the individuals who are considering rejoining the workforce through our returnship program. We truly hope today's discussion helps you in your job search as you pursue your future career goals. To learn more and apply to our chapter next returnship opportunities, please visit our website, which the link is in the chat box. Thank you again and have a lovely International Women's Day.